The holidays start here at Kroger with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. Whether you're making a traditional roasted turkey or spicy turkey tacos, your go-to shrimp cocktail, or your first Cajun risotto, Kroger has all the freshest ingredients to embrace your traditions. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Choose from a great selection of digital coupons and use them up to five times in one transaction. Check our app for details. Kroger, fresh for everyone. When you download the Kroger app, you have easy access to savings every day. Get the most out of weekly sales and receive personalized coupons to save on your favorite items, all while earning one fuel point for every dollar spent. Kroger makes it easy to save while you shop, whether it's in-store or online, so you get the most value out of every trip, every time. Download the Kroger app now to save big on your next purchase. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Must have a digital account to redeem offers. Restrictions may apply. See site for details. Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis. Join us as we seek the truth and travel the long road to justice. Hi, Alibiers. Welcome to another episode of Pretty Lies and Alibis. I'm Gigi Fruit Loop. What you know? Did you know that eating too many onions can cause sleepiness? So the onion is full of beneficial minerals that are good for the human body. However, it is also a natural sedative because of, they are rich in L-tryptophan. Wow. So, Didn't know that. Don't eat too many onions. Yeah, if you eat too many onions, it also causes singleness. So there you go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so I've been watching the preliminary hearing of Chad's that was, you know, a while back. Just plugging in some details on this timeline. And I'm reminded of how many times John Pryor asked for foundation. Yeah, it was so annoying. He was annoying in that whole thing, but. Yeah, yeah totally uh, we could do a pretty lies drinking game where during the trial, every time he asked for foundation, everybody take a shot, but we would have alcohol poisoning probably in the first hour or so. Yeah, I remember it was like, Ugh. oh man, yeah. And his demeanor, it's not going to do him any favors in that courtroom with a jury, but you do yeah. you prior. Hey, you see my new photo? Wait, hold on. I always do this backwards. My new photo. So, you know, like taking landscape photos. So I have a new photo. It said uh, it's the uh, travel the long road to justice. But it's actually oh, a photo cool. out of uh, New Mexico. Oh, that's really um, cool. Yeah, where I go to New Mexico is like this long road. So. so I posted on Twitter and Facebook a very traumatic experience I had just a little bit ago. So what are they called? Do you know those bugs? Uh, what, which, which is it a June bug? No, it's, I forget. It starts with a C. They got bulgy eyes. Um, they're loud. Uh, what are they called? Oh, c- uh, we call them Katie dids, but they're oh, Katie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Katie did. I think. Um, yeah. yeah. So anyways, I'm standing outside with my little, uh, adopted nephew who has autism and we're talking and, you know, talking about life. And this thing does like a kamikaze dive. (laughs) Dude, I'm going to show this on Twitter right there. Okay, That's me holding the carcass of this thing because when it slammed into my forehead, which has a red mark, I might add, (laughs) it killed it. Sheesh. So you know how they say like when a bird hits a window, it's an omen that somebody's going to die. So I was Googling what happens when a Katie did like hits you in the head and dies. Nothing Nothing yeah, found. That makes me remember that movie Lucas. That old oh, movie Lucas. Yeah. I haven't seen that in a long time. That was a really yeah, good movie. Corey Haim, I think. Too. Yeah, he died. Sad mm-hmm. stuff. So we're gonna pick back up on these blog posts. So um, we're still in 2015, August 26, 2015. Chad blogs Halos and Hector Sosa. Mm. So Hector Sosa was on that Aval forum, if you remember. And in the beginning of this case, we found that forum. And a lot of those guys were really defending Lori and Chad for a long time. Yeah. Um, and I think that, that for a while, Hector was one. Um, I don't know how much, but still. All right. So it says the beginning of the blog talks about him on his mission and not having luck with a born again Christian woman who cussed them out. Then they meet a family who was LDS, but had quick going. The woman, Yesenia said she was eager to become active in the church again, and Jorge said he had dreams about his family's future. 
In one dream, Jorge is fighting off Satan's efforts to get his family. Then a light comes and Satan departs. In another dream, Jorge was shown Yasinia's family on a battlefield, engaging in a battle of life and death. At first, they are winning, but then they start to lose. When Jorge comes onto the scene, they win the battle. When Jorge asked me what I thought they meant, I said I felt it meant that Jorge should join the church and lead Yasinia's family back to full activity in the church. A few days later, we meet again, and the spirit was nearly overpowering. Towards the end of the visit, Jorge stopped any dis- stopped the discussion and said, I wasn't going to say anything, but I just need to tell you that there are halos around you. You are both surrounded by a halo. We couldn't see the halo, but it was special confirmation to us and to him that what we are teaching is true. He said Jorge ends up becoming a bishop and now lives in Florida. So he kind of tells his, you know, what ended up with Jorge. And he says, Jorge is of Puerto Rican descent, and I share his story today because it reminds me so much of another wonderful Puerto Rican man that I have become close with, close friends with, Hector Sosa Jr. I visited a website in early 2015 where Hector had shared a few dreams he had experienced through his life. More recently, he had been having dreams about his family's future. I read them with interest, and it reminded me of the dreams Jorge had shared with Elder Hepworth and me nearly 30 years earlier. So he goes on to say, and I think Hector too spoke at some of those speaking things that they spoke he at did, or whatever. Yeah. He was on some of the posters. Mm-hmm. Um, so he says, then one Friday night in January, I was talking with my family at home in Springville when the spirit said, go knock on Hector Sosa's door right now. He needs to write a book. Uh, I really hate receiving those kinds of messages. I know how writing a book can change a person's life completely for good and bad. I had never met Hector or even sent him an email message, but I went to the computer and found his address. I was happy to see he also lived in Springville. At least the spirit knew it would be a short trip. I was expecting him to live in Provo or even farther. I grabbed my jacket and told my wife, Tammy, "Uh, I need to go tell someone they need to write a book. She is fortunately accustomed to this kind of thing. She said, okay, I'll see you when you get back. It was dark by the time I got to Hector's home. I rang the doorbell, and Hector opened the door a bit tentatively. I said, hi, I'm Chad Daybell. I published Julie Rowe's books. You've heard of her, right? And Hector nodded. Yeah, I've read her books. Uh, Chad says, can I come in for a minute? Hector graciously allowed him in, and I explained I had read some of his dreams on a website. He shared more details about them. And we really felt like old friends right from the start. I met his wife, who is also named Tammy, and I thought that was a good sign. After an hour and a half, I finally broached the subject of writing a book. Hector looked shocked. Me, he asked. Wow, I don't know. Uh, I, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, you, oh. I figured that answer was better than no, so I explained how I would help assemble it. He soon agreed to do it, and I made sure Tammy was on board as well. They are a great couple, and she has been a huge support every step of the way. So over the next couple of weeks, Hector wrote a very good first draft. Then we started meeting every Thursday evening, and he would give me more material for the manuscript. During these meetings, I would ask additional questions that help him remember certain dreams and visions. These visits brought forth some of the most powerful parts of his book, A Change is Coming. The final chapter in the book is about upcoming national unrest and economic trouble, and it was literally a last-second edition. I'd taken the typeset manuscript to Hector's house for a final check. When I arrived, he explained he'd had another vision that absolutely needed to be included. He emailed me the chapter, and when I received it and put it in the typeset version, I stopped the last paragraph. It is chilling, and I wondered whether I should delete the last sentence. At that very moment, Hector sent me an email saying that the spirit told him the final paragraph needed to be exact word for word. I said to myself, fine with me. I left it as it now stands in the book. So we're going to jump to another blog, uh, August 28th, 2015. Remember at this point, we said it in the last episode, Lori's really starting to get into Chad's books, probably reading these very things that we're reading out now. Uh, Chad blogs, miracles still happen. He says, while I was with Elder Hepworth in Union City, we witnessed actual miracles. One happened with the Jimenez family. They lived in one of the scariest apartment buildings I'd ever seen. 
Graffiti was scrawled across the hallways and the building was trashed. We were worried about going in there, but we felt compelled to. On the top floor, we met a man named Carlos and his teenage daughter, Lena. She told us to come back when her mother, Anna, was home. So we returned the next day, and Anna kind of freaked out when she saw us in the doorway. Uh, she told us that the week before, she had a vivid dream of two young men in white shirts and ties entering her family's life and helping them find eternal truths. She invited us in, and we had a very good discussion. Lena actually progressed faster than Aunt Anna, and she was baptized. Okay, I just want to say, and we talked about this, he, he don't know nothing about blogging. Uh-uh. No. He ain't got a clue. Uh-uh. He just, and some of y'all that are listening to this know y'all read some of his books. I ain't the only one. <laughs> y'all know just straight up from his book. He don't know how to blog. Um, so Lena had a major medical issue, though. Her left wrist and arm had nerve damage, and the muscles had been deteriorating for a few months. Her arm either hung limply at her side or she cradled it in her right hand. Their doctor was very skeptical about her fixing the problem, but he was willing to try surgery. Anna's hold up on getting baptized had been tithing because she felt she needed to save money for Lena's upcoming surgery, but she started paying it the week Lena was baptized. I soon received word that I was being transferred to Newark, but I was allowed to pay the Jimenez, Jim, 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 Jimenez? I think it's, I don't know. I think it's I Jimenez and no disrespect to anybody with that last no. name. It's just, we say it like no, we see we it in the South, y'all. We can't <laughs> pronounce nothing. Uh, family, one last visit. When we arrived, both Elder Hepworth and I felt we should give Lena a priesthood blessing. I felt he should give it. Uh-oh, he didn't want to give it. <laughs> As Elder Hepworth gave the blessing, I could tell something special was happening. We had true spiritual power resting upon us. Lena started crying before the blessing ended. She could feel a tingling sensation happening in her hand. Then suddenly she was healed and she could move it normally. Elder Hepworth and I looked at each other in shock. Anna had Lena raise her arm and lower it without any pain. Anna was baptized the following week and has been a stall stalwart member ever since. Okay, so I want to talk to this uh, Elder Hepworth, and I want to see if this truly happened. Yeah. He's acting like he's Jesus, going around healing people. Yeah. Lord have mercy. So a few months later, I was serving as a zone leader in Patterson, New Jersey with Elder Cobb. My previous companion and I had felt guided to a certain part of the city where we, where there weren't a lot of Spanish-speaking people. On this night, I drove back into that same neighborhood. As we crossed an intersection, I heard a male voice shout, Stop the car. I quickly slammed on the brakes and pulled to the side of the road. I turned to Elder Cobb and said, What's so important? He looked at me like I was nuts. What do you mean, he asked. Why did you shout to stop the car? Dun, dun, dun. He says, I didn't say anything, he said, looking puzzled. You really didn't hear that, I asked, but he shook his head. I tried to explain, but finally I said, we must need to find somebody around here. We parked the car and started walking, and I spotted a guy on a ladder painting the second story of a house. I shouted up to him, do you know where any Spanish-speaking people live on this block? He pointed across the street and said, try that house over there. We went to the house he pointed to, and a cheerful-looking man opened the door as we approached. He was just leaving, but he gave him a Book of Mormon, and he said he would be interested in having us come back. Our conversation with him lasted about a minute. It's now time to stop for our feature sponsor. Uh, we have two this week. What's the first one? Our first paid sponsor is Everly Well. If you've been experiencing symptoms and don't know where to start, Everly Well is committed to listening and supporting your journey towards better health and wellness. The Everly Well Women's Health Test measures 11 biomarkers known to play a role in your overall health and wellness and checks for any abnormal levels that may be keeping you from feeling your best. Everly Well also has high quality vitamins and supplements to support your overall health. Choose from a variety of options, including vitamin D3 and omega-3 fish oil. Everly Well ships products straight to you with everything needed in one package. To take your at-home lab test, simply collect your sample and use the included prepaid shipping label to mail your test back to a certified lab. Your physician reviewed results get sent to your phone or device in just days. I'm waiting on mine. I sent mine. I'm ready yep. to go. 
I have a YouTube video up showing me taking the test. So check it out, guys. The whole process and experience with Everly Well is so simple and easy to use. I, did I decided to take the metabolism test. You can watch that on YouTube. The test is really simple. It was easy to use. One little finger stick didn't hurt. And a saliva sample. The Everly Well experience is trustworthy. And along with other 1 million people, I'm eager to partner with Everly Well as they support my health and wellness goals. And for listeners of the show, Everly Well is offering a special discount of 20% off an at-home lab test at everlywell.com slash whattheworld. That's everlywell.com slash whattheworld for 20% off your next at-home lab test. Again, everlywell.com slash whattheworld. Our next partner is Athletic Greens, and I started doing AG1 because I wanted to get on a healthy routine. So what's in this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. You're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance. It's the one thing with the best things. Athletic Greens uses the best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product. It's a weird word. Atrations and third-party testing. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews and it is recommended by professional athletes. It's also trusted by leading health experts, experts such as Tim Ferriss and Michael Gervais. All right, so right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash world. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash what the world to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Thank you guys for listening and being patient. And also some of you guys have actually ordered this stuff. We're really yep. excited. And back to Chad's blog. Where do we leave off? Because so it was me. Um, I turned around to thank the guy on the ladder, but there was no sign of him. I couldn't believe it. He could hardly have climbed down to the ground in the time we had our backs to him, much less cart away the paint can and the ladder. The combination of the shouting voice and the disappearing ladder guy, all within five minutes, hinted that there might be something special about this family. Did he check to see if he fell off the ladder? I know, right? He could have been laying on the <laughs> ground. That family joined the church within a month. We soon met the husband's sisters, Jenny and Karina, who were soon baptized as well. They have been ambassadors of the gospel throughout their lives. So he says, at the end of my mission a few months later, Jenny asked if I would give her a priesthood blessing. I did. And when I concluded, she turned around and told me that during the blessing, she received a vision of a young blonde girl with short hair who was praying at the side of her bed. The girl was asking Heavenly Father to guide her and help her find the right person to spend her life with. Jenny felt that this was the girl I would marry. I knew Jenny was very receptive to spiritual things, and I took her seriously. I didn't know any girls with short blonde hair, though. I wonder if Lori had short hair around that time. Uh, so a week later, I was home in Springville, Utah. I saw my brother's 1988 high school yearbook on a shelf, so I grabbed it and flipped through it. There was a half-page feature about a girl named Tammy Douglas. When I saw her face, I felt the, the most electrifying shock of my life. Staring back at me was a beautiful girl with short blonde hair. I quickly turned to her senior class photo, and I was fascinated. I realized she would have been a sophomore when I was a senior, but I couldn't remember her. She would have graduated more than a year earlier and had probably gone off to college somewhere. What were the odds I would find her? I'll end the suspense now. I found her. In the next post, I'll share how the Lord brought us together. So that's the end of that blog post. It's kind of a couple of long ones there. I actually tweeted out that picture of Tammy uh, a few days ago on our social media. Really beautiful girl. Wow. Yeah. Her smile, like, you know, there are certain people I can look at pictures of and you could tell how warm they are. I don't know. For me, I just get this yeah. sense of like a really warm, sweet person. And every time I see a picture of Tammy, like that's how I feel. It's really weird. Yeah. 
And I always think, I also think every librarian I've ever known is like the coolest, most yeah person. Like, for sure. I've yeah, yeah. 100 percent It's true. Yeah. They're a special breed. So Fruit Loop, you start this one on August 31st, 2015. Yep. So Chad's blog is Cemetery Courtship. Uh, in my last post, I ended by des describing how I felt when I saw my future wife, Tammy's photo in a yearbook. I asked my brothers about her and I was thrilled to find out she was the secretary for Springville's Parks and Cemeteries Department. I still couldn't figure out why I couldn't remember her. Then I came to understand that some sort of spiritual veil had been placed over my mind concerning her during high school. If we had gotten to know each other at that time, we would have become inseparable but we still had many growing experiences to go through on our own before we came a, became a couple. The timing wasn't right for either one of us. However, I was surprised to find out later that Tammy had been keeping an eye on me since her sophomore year. I was on the Springville High Student Council, and she was in the audience during the assemblies. The student body president and I would put together crazy skits, such as dancing wildly around and jumping off the stage like rock stars. That so doesn't sound like him. No. Not with his uh, New Look, Balance shoes. And... Okay. So speaking to me watching these preliminary hearings, can we talk about how awkward the guy is? I mean, there's one time where Pryor objects and Chad's got his hand and he does this really weird grin. And anytime somebody like stumbles over their words, he has this awkward smile. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so despite this, Tammy still admired me from afar in the school halls. While I was on my mission, she had even told her friends, I'm going to date Chad Daybell when he gets home. During my final interview with my mission president, I explained that I wanted to teach at the Missionary Training Center in Provo. I would be attending BYU, and I thought a job there would work out well. My mission president had connections at the MTC, and he wrote a wonderful letter of recommendation for me. After a few days I got home, I took the letter to the MTC and was interviewed on the spot. The interview went great. I filled out some paperwork and then returned the following week to teach classes to actual missionaries. An evaluator observed me, and afterward, he said he was impressed. He said to expect a call to start working there within a week. I was excited that everything had gone so smoothly. At church, they had announced a single ward, singles ward family night, and I was really hoping Tammy would be there. When I arrived, the group was already playing ragtag game of volleyball. I had spotted Tammy from the moment I entered the cultural hall. Did I say that right? Cultural. Later, she told me she was watching me too, although at the time I wasn't aware she knew who I was. She was on the volleyball team, so I, she was on one volleyball team, so I joined the other team, and soon we rotated to be across the net from each other. We started, we stared at each other for a moment before she caught, confident dude i'm not drunk i swear y'all before she confidently said i'm going to spike it in your face i smiled at her comment but the only reply i could come up with was oh yeah then the ball was served into the net and we rotated away from each other we didn't speak again the rest of the night although we still played a cat and mouse game of keeping an eye on each other so toward the end of the night, a friend said he wanted to go on a double date on Friday. So I told him I would ask Tammy out. I went home and called her and I was relieved when she accepted. I later found out that Tammy had actually danced around the living room after she hung up the phone. Tammy hadn't been too big on dating. So her parents sensed from her excited reaction that she might actually be interested in me. So Friday finally arrived. We were both a little nervous, but I was smitten right from the start. The date went great, and we went to a fireside at the Marriott Center two days later. I was feeling good about how things were going. Uh, so the next week, I returned to MTC because I hadn't heard anything from them about my job. I talked to the secretary and explained I'd gone through the whole process and was waiting to hear my starting date. I remember you, she said, the elevator, I don't know, the elevator, the evaluator, we both can't talk. <laughs> uh, the elevator said, no, nah, the evaluator said you did well. Uh, let me get your file. She opened the filing cabinet behind her and shuffled through some papers. I know it was right here. She said, I waited for five minutes as she checked every possible spot. The file could be, but it wasn't there. She called in the evaluator and asked if he had taken my file. No, he said, can't you find it to make a long story short? They never found it. 
the evaluator finally said, I'm sorry, but you're, you're going to have to start over. If you fill out the paperwork today, we could have you teach a class next week. You already saw me teach. I said, can't we go from that? I wish, but we need a record of the missionaries evaluations of you. And that group left last week. He said, don't worry, it'll go quickly. I was a bit perturbed, but I took the paperwork with me and returned home. I called Tammy at her job and told her what happened. I guess I'll just do it all again, I said. Tammy had other ideas. She knew my brother was leaving on his mission soon and was going to quit work at the cemetery. Tammy called the cemetery sexton, Denny Pickering, and told him that I was looking for a part-time job. Really, Denny asked, that would be great. Have him put in an application. Tammy called me back and said, I think I found a job for you. I was soon hired, and that's how I got into the cemetery business. In retrospect, I know there was some heavenly intervention involved in my missing MTC file because the cemetery job was actually a better fit for me in every way. I could work long hours at a higher hourly wage, and I could see the woman I was interested in more often. Tammy's office was downtown, but at times she told me to bring burial reports to the cemetery. Denny told me Tammy used to bring those reports up here once a week. Now she seems to come almost every day. Her visits usually happen to coincide with my break time and our cemetery courtship. It allowed us to get better acquainted. Within a month, we took the bold step of actually sitting next to each other during the singles ward sacrament meeting. The universe assigned to other ward members, we were now a couple and pretty much off limits to anyone else. I began praying sincerely whether Tammy was a person I should marry. One evening, I was driving alone from BYU back to Springville. I told Heavenly Father that even though I had only known Tammy for about 10 weeks, I had decided to propose to her. I received such a strong yes that it brought tears to my eyes. That night, I unofficially proposed to her. Then on the night before Thanksgiving, I knelt down before her and gave her a diamond engagement ring. She thankfully said yes, and we spent Thanksgiving Day showing the ring to our extended families. This is like, it's actually sickening, you know? I mean, no, what we know now, yeah. it's like yeah. you just want to sit here and say, run, girl, run. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah poor Tammy. Gosh. Yeah. Uh, we registered for three classes during BYU's winter semester, and Tammy literally saved my grade in statistics. I would have never survived that class without her. We were married in March of 1990 in the Manti Temple and just really enjoyed being newlyweds. However, it wasn't long before our future children started making their presence known through the veil. We were anxious to come to earth. They were anxious to come to earth and wanted to know what we were waiting for. <laughs> oh, God, really? Can you imagine the pickup lines? I'm just going to leave it there. Before I cover that topic, though, in my next entry, I'll share what it was like to grow up with Scott Michael, a former NFL quarterback who recently was in the spotlight again on the TV show The Biggest Loser. He is a deeply spiritual person who has bounced back from obesity to reclaim his life and inspire others. So we're going to stop there. Um, yeah, that, he, that guy distanced himself from him. Yeah. And in fact, he, he was just on something. Um, I think there was a special yeah. like a couple of weeks ago and he spoke yeah. on it. Chad actually on the blog had a picture of, uh, him and this guy, maybe Chad published a book of his or something. If they were in front of a table full of books, yeah. but you know, it's just weird to read this stuff because all this was written before Lori, but you see this, you know, self promotion as this visionary who had abilities nobody else had. Yeah. 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 You know, um, and, and, you know, one thing fruit loop, I was going back through some of our really, really old notes today, just trying to get as much of this stuff done as I can. I'm going to the beach next week. So I just want to try to finish this up and free up some of my time. But if you remember, we were sitting here, um, I think it was the day they found the bodies, maybe the day after. And we went to Google earth and did overhead views of Chad's property and remember, like, the day after Tylee would have been buried, we saw, like, that disturbed soil mm -hmm. and all that. It's just really weird to go back through this because, you know, it's just like you remember all these little things we were here doing. Yep. You know, at the very yep. beginning of this case is insane. But yep. anyways, guys, we appreciate you tuning in. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube. We're almost at 8,000 followers, which is mind-blowing. 
So oh, yeah. help us get there. Like the videos. It pushes those videos out to people who kind of have searched about this case. Helps us grow. Hey, and, some of y'all um, reached out and uh, uh, befriended my Facebook page. Now I have like six friends. Oh, ah. look at you with your six yeah, friends. I'm moving up. Moving Man, up. I tell you, I need to look at my friend requests. I probably got, yeah, five years ago. Anyway, I can't guys, do anything. I can't like join any groups or anything because they think I'm a bot because I only have six friends. Oh, yeah. Sometimes yeah. they'll like flag your account too. Yeah. I had a friend who was like, yeah. Man, I just got. Like their Facebook account got deactivated yeah. because they were talking about controversial topics like on a news channel and they thought know. it was just a, like a sock account for bunny. I don't yeah. know, whatever. Yeah. Um, so anyways, guys, we'll be back tomorrow. I think we have just um, a couple of more blogs to go before we get back into that main timeline, which is interesting. Just I'm still every day finding stuff to plug in. So yeah. uh, we're both hard at work watching old interviews and trying to get little tidbits that, you know, aren't widely known unless you watch those videos. So anyways, yeah. we'll keep working at it. You guys keep being awesome and we will see you tomorrow. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah. Oh. Sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. Ch -ch -ch -chumba. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Ch -ch -ch -chumba. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Lucky Land Casino. Asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.